Hi everyone, and welcome to part 6 of the DMC2 training series. Previously, we looked at preparing G-code for this specific part with Fusion 360. Once you have your desired G-code file, it's time to bring it over to your CNC and load it. As I mentioned before, I like to sync both of my computers to the same Dropbox folder, so that when I save one G-code file on my main PC, it uploads immediately over Wi-Fi to my CNC laptop. Walking back and forth with a USB stick every time is tedious and annoying. One thing to note is that I'm using Mach 3 as my CNC control software. A lot of the probing features I show are specific to Mach 3 and are a huge boost to productivity which is why I recommend you use it too. You can of course use other control softwares like Gerbil, but you will lose functionality like the MPG wheel and the automatic X and Y probing, which is kind of annoying, but there are workarounds and modifications online, and of course you can still manually probe the X and Y axes and type in the offsets for the same results. Using Gerbil will still allow you to use the DMC2 to its full extent, just with less conveniences. So let's start. Here I am with the DMC2 CNC. I power it on, I turn on the computer, and I launch Mach 3 into my DMC2 profile. Mach 3 is kind of a messy, ugly software, but thankfully you can apply a custom screen to it, which just organizes the buttons and graphics how you want. I like to use this one by Physics Anonymous. Whatever you use, the processes shown and buttons still do the exact same thing. So the first thing you want to do when you power on the machine is enable the machine by clicking the flashing e-stop button, and then home the machine. Enabling the machine turns on the CNC motors so that they are now physically holding position in servo mode. Homing the CNC machine tells it where the axes are when it powers on, and it saves that data while enabled so that the machine knows where it is as it moves around, preventing it from crashing past its limits. CNC machines have two separate coordinate systems. The first one, called the machine coordinates, is the physical X, Y, and Z location of where each axis is in its travel. And the other one is sort of an imaginary X, Y, and Z system called the work coordinates, and that tells the software where your part is sitting in the machine. The machine coordinates are always fixed in space relative to where your end stops are, and the numbers you see in the digital readout for the machine coordinates are basically telling you where the tip of your tool is relative to each end stop. The work coordinates are wherever you have your stock material placed in the machine, so they can be anywhere you choose within the machine travel. Now if you recall from the previous episodes, we set up the cam file for this design out of a 2 inch by 2 inch piece of aluminum stock. The part was set up so that its features faced upwards of course, and with the text facing forwards when viewed from the front. We set this up by defining the X, Y, and Z directions in the part setup. So now, I need to mount my part in the CNC in the same direction. Obviously I planned ahead of time that I would have a vise mounted on my CNC to allow this, so I'm going to tighten that down now in the vise, making sure that it's sticking straight upwards. I'm going to now load a tool into the spindle. I'm loading the tool I intend to use, which must be the exact same tool that each operation in the current setup file is using. To load the tool, Unscrew the collet nut, snap the correct size collet inside, which should be the exact size as the end mill shaft you're using, and then tighten the nut back on the spindle with the end mill inside. Now that the part is physically mounted in the machine in the correct orientation, and the tool is loaded, we now need to tell Mach 3 where this part is sitting in the machine. To do that, recall the importance of selecting an appropriate point for the work coordinate system in the cam setup. I picked the front left top corner for that. We now need to locate that point by moving the machine until the center of the bottom of the tool in use is physically in that exact position. I can use the keyboard and on-screen MPG to jog the machine to that point, being very careful not to crash the tool into the part. Or I can use the physical MPG wheel and jog over more quickly and intuitively. When I get the bottom center of my tool onto the exact workplace coordinate point, I can click 0 for each axis since they are all in their respective position and now I can start the job. Now you probably realize that that is not a very accurate way of locating the part. First of all, I'm using my eyesight to locate the position, and I'm potentially hitting my delicate tool onto the workpiece, risking damage to either one if I only slipped and jogged a little too far into the part. There are many ways to probe a part, and the most easy way for metal parts on the DMC2 is to use the included automatic probes. This is extremely accurate and fast, and does not put your tool or part in much risk and almost completely eliminates all of the potential human error. Now if you're following along with your machine, do not do this yet, until you calibrate your probes. That's going to be covered in video number 8 in this series, 
so make sure you watch that first before using your probe. This video is just to introduce you to the entire probing concept on the DMC2. So the first step to probing is to take the height puck and place it on the top surface that intersects the origin in your setup. You simply place the puck on the surface, making sure the top and bottom are clean, jog your tool just over the top surface of the puck, and then click the tool height set button in Mach 3. The machine will slowly move down, and when it makes contact, it will complete a circuit and then retract up a bit with the distance saved. For diagnostic purposes, whenever the top of the height puck touches an unpainted part of the machine frame, it should light the index indicator light in Mach 3. Make sure that that happens before actually using your height puck, otherwise the tool will just smash into it and keep going. With the Z-axis probed in, next you take the XY probe and stick it into place on the magnetic mount, again making sure that all surfaces are clean and free of chips. You should try to have the probe always facing the same direction every time you use it. I put a black sharpie line on mine so that I always have it facing the front. This is because if the probe is out of round at all, then every time you load it in, you don't want it in a different orientation each time. So once it's in, you use the keyboard or MPG again to jog the probe tip in front of the face that you want to probe off of. In this case, I'll probe off of the front face, which will locate the Y axis of the work coordinate. On the probe screen, I'm going to click the Y forward button, and it will automatically jog forward until it hits the part, and it'll save the position exactly where it made contact and then back off. I'm going to now jog around to the left side of the part to locate the X position of the work coordinate system. I click the left to right side probe button and it will do the same thing. Now if you were to click go to zero in the work coordinates, the machine should wrap it over to get the tool bottom center point right over the origin point that we set in CAM. There's no reason to do this, but it's an example to show that we've achieved the same thing as eyeballing the tool in as earlier, except on a far more accurate level. This is a useful button for more advanced things. So if you do click it, just make sure your tool is not going to wrap it through the stock material and crash to get to the origin point. So once you have all three axes probed in, then you're ready to hit cycle start and let the machine run the file. In the next video we'll do that, because there are a few important checks and things to look out for when actually running the DMC2. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.